Over the past decade or so, it's been a little hard to get excited by the Bundesliga. German football has long been held in a stranglehold by Bayern Munich, which is why there is so much excitement about the sensational season that Bayer Leverkusen are having, as it will break an 11-year run of Bayern dominance. You have to go back to the 2011-12 season, where Jurgen Klopp steered Borussia Dortmund to victory for a different winner. Whilst there are a number of massive clubs in the league who have been left behind by the Bavarian giant, there is one club not too far from Munich that has never even had a taste of success at the top level. FC Augsburg have been a football institution for over a hundred years, but it wasn't until a decade ago that they made it to the top table. They spent almost all of their history in the lower leagues, having never won a major trophy in that time. They were runners-up in the Bundesliga 2 in 2011, and since then, although they have survived in the top flight, their highest ever finish was fifth, giving them their only ever European campaign. The furthest they have ever gone in the Pokal is the semi-final, but for a club of such longevity, they've been starved of success. It's time for a change. So the bearded manager is heading back to the Bundesliga, ready to take on one of its smallest clubs and take them to success for the very first time. Also, this video was requested by one of you incredible viewers. And I love a challenge. First things first, the club don't have the best facilities, so we'll have to try and build them up over the next few seasons as youth recruitment will go a long way for a club of this size. Although we have only roughly 2 million in the transfer budget, the club has no net debt and a small amount of outstanding transfer debt to its name. Which means the club is in the perfect position to grow. Right, let's see what we're dealing with. There are a number of exciting high potential players already at the club, so if we can keep them together, we can certainly make some strides forward. The pick of them are certainly our two young German midfielders, Tim Breithrup and Arne Engels, and up top we have Ermedine Demirovic, who looks like he could be a real handful. Wanting to put a stamp on this squad, I moved out goalkeeper Thomas Kubek, who had already made it clear he'd be leaving on a free at the end of the season, and he moved to FC Utrecht for 775k, whilst Nicholas Dorsch has moved to Dortmund for 5.25 million. We use that money to strengthen our defence, with former Manchester United man Timothy Fosu Mensah joining from Bayer Leverkusen for just 240k, as well as Hervoj Smolšić, who joined us from Frankfurt for 3.6 million. Tobias Lawal comes in as a very decent backup goalkeeper for just 2 million, and we also signed Lauren Ulrich for 765k from Stuttgart but he's gone out on loan for the season. I've also done something I don't usually do, and that's bring in 17-year-old Asano Drago in on loan from Schalke, but we do have an optional future fee, and the stats on this kid are insane. Hopefully, we'll have enough next summer to make that move permanent. He goes straight into our first 11, alongside some other new signings, but the media think we will be in for a season of struggle. Oh, I'm excited for this one. One thing we were tasked with this season was to be competitive in the Pokal, but we went out in the second round to second tier Kiel, but apparently that was okay with the board. I like being Augsburg manager, I really do. We started the Bundesliga well, turning the WWK arena into a real fortress from the off winning our first nine home games in a row, and we were also picking up some impressive wins on the road. I was genuinely surprised at the tune I was getting out of this team, and when we got to January, we were sitting in third place. We didn't have any money to spend to bolster the squad, but we did manage to offload Danish fullback Mads Pedersen to Leon for 2.8 million. After four games without a win across January and February, we rediscovered our winning form and we went into the final game of the season sitting in fifth, just behind Hoffenheim and Bayer Leverkusen. And our final game of the season? Away to Bayer Leverkusen. Our talisman Emedin Demirovic put us ahead in the first half before Loni Asano Drago scored a wonderful second to put us 2-0 up. Florian Wirtz scored a tremendous goal in the fifth minute of injury time, but we got over the line 
and we finished in a fantastic third. Although we are miles away from second place Bayern and surprising champions RB Leipzig. Uh, third is an incredible achievement for Augsburg and it means we are now in a position to offer European football, which is good because I feel this squad does need a little bit of an overhaul. The board are backing me with a wonderful £30 million budget and immediately we made Asano Drago's move permanent, signing him on a long-term contract for just £8.5 million. At 18 years old, just look at these stats. But like I said, we needed a major overhaul and we said goodbye to goalkeeper Brian Lawal, who we sold to Nottingham Forest for a loss of just under 500k, and Rita Oxford also left the club, returning to England with Hull City for 1.7 million. Both Patrick Pfeiffer and Felix Adoki made it clear they wouldn't sign new contracts, and they were sold to Bochum and Leverkusen respectively for a combined 11.2 million, whilst right back Robert Gummy moved to Rakow for 500k. Jeffrey Gouvalu headed to FC Utrecht for 1.2 million, while striker Philippe Tietz moved to Bochum for 3 million. Winger Ruben Vargas requested that he be allowed to move to the Premier League, and he headed to Fulham for 11 million. But unfortunately, our star striker and captain Ermedin Demirovic had his release clause triggered by Al Etihad, and he left the club for 19 million and a 300k weekly wage. And I mean, for that money, I can't really blame him, but that's nine first team players out of our squad. So before we go into the transfer window, I'm gonna ask you if you could help me by just clicking the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel. It really helps you know, with the YouTube algorithms, it helps this channel grow, and who knows, it might help me in the transfer market. As always, I scoured the free market and we bought in goalkeeper Daniel Nomov from CSKA, along with defenders Anthony Ayogo from Frosnoin, Loic Mbiso from Forest, and Jeremy Ngaka from Watford. Along with Udrago, we did spend some money this summer as Moritz Jens joined from Wolfsburg for 10 million, and we also spent the same on Eric Martel from FC Köln. Talis Magno looks a real steal for just 5.5 million from New York City, but our marquee signing and replacement for Demirovic is 26 year old Nigerian striker Tewo Awanyi from Nottingham Forest. Our squad has been significantly overhauled and looks well equipped for another run for Europe even if the media have us down for a mid-table finish. And I'm not gonna lie, this rebuild has been really fun so far, so let's get on with season two. This season marked Augsburg's first ever venture into the Champions League, and we were drawn alongside Nice, Rennes, Real Madrid, Juventus, Celtic, Red Star Belgrade, Napoli, and Atalanta. And we had one of the greatest nights in this club's history. We took the lead against Real Madrid through our team sensation Asana Drago in the first half before he doubled the lead on the hour with a delicious finish. Vinicius Jr. pulled one back for Real Madrid before Adrago capped off an historic night with his third to secure his hat-trick and Augsburg a famous 3-2 victory. We did pretty well throughout the rest of the group, which saw us finish a respectable 19th, which set up a playoff match against Athletic Bilbao. And we raced into a two-goal lead thanks to Talis Magno and then Tewo Awanyi, but Bilbao hit back to draw the tie level and give them the advantage as we headed to Spain. But it was that man, Adrago, once again who made history with the only goal of the game, to see us through to the last 16, where our journey ended with a decent showing, going down 5-3 on aggregate to RB Salzburg. An incredible first campaign in the Champions League, and you know what? We want to do it again next year, which means we need to finish in the top four. Once again, we were incredibly solid in the first half of the season, losing only three times across the first 16 games, meaning when we hit January, we were sitting fourth in the league. A minimal January transfer window passed with Masaya Kugawa leaving the club, heading to Stuttgart for 3.4 million, and we brought in young winger Peter from Real Madrid because at just 165k, he's certainly worth a punt. This meant our squad was unrattled by any outgoings, but we did hit a slump in March, where coupled with our defeats in the Champions League to RB Salzburg, we also lost three Bundesliga games on the spin. 
but we recovered to go unbeaten in the last seven and we comfortably finished fourth, once again securing Champions League football for this club. And finally, the Pokal, where we navigated a pretty routine route all the way to the semi-final, where we headed to Bayer Leverkusen. Heiwe Awoni gave us an early lead in the time before Patrick Schick drew the game level just after half-time. Youngster Peter scored his first goal for the club in the 84th minute before Frederick Jensen scored the decisive third goal in a 3-2 victory to send Augsburg to their first ever major final. It might not really seem like it, but we have a real chance of creating history right now. In the final, we face Hertha Berlin and in the 26th minute, Dion Drenner Beljo rose to head us in front and shortly after half time, left back David Kalino drove into the box to drive us into a comfortable lead. However, Hertha hit back within a minute through Tabakovic and then with just a few minutes to go, some awful defending allowed Hertha an equaliser, which they duly took. A cagey extra time played out before our record signing Awoni slammed home the winner, meaning Augsburg lifted the DB Pokal, their first ever major trophy. Like I said, this rebuild has been so much fun and that's a trophy and another top four finish. So this feels like the summer where we can really elevate this club. It helps massively to have a 61 million pound transfer budget and news from the chairman that they are building a new stadium and improving the youth facilities. We began our rebuild this summer with the sales of Daniel Numov and Elvis Rexbajak to El Nasser for a combined 8.25 million and Maximilian Bau moved to Schalke for 5 million. Dion Drenner Beljo headed to Sao Paulo for 3 million, whilst Arne Meyer moved to Leeds United for 4 million. Luc Mbeso has joined Colm on loan with a view to a permanent move. We used the free market to snap up some incredible young talent this summer with Matteo Perez Vinlov, Christian Kwam, Torbin Rain, and Noel Aseke and Keeley all joining on a free from Bayern Munich, and they've all gone out on loan to develop this season. We've also bought in young winger Rayan Shirky on a free from Leon, and he looks a great piece of business. But this is the summer where we got to throw around some cash and we bought in goalkeeper Nicholas Heddle from SQ Rapid for 5.25 million as well as young defenders Sanasi Bar from Leipzig and Tarek Bookman from Bayern for a combined 5.2 million. Kike Salas joins us from Seville for 18.5 million along with midfielders Robert Wagner from Freiburg for 3.2 million and Luka Sucic from RB Salzburg for 10.75 million. But our marquee signing this summer, and one that I cannot believe we pulled off, was of Yusufa Makoko from Borussia Dortmund, who joins us for 24.5 million. It's been a tremendous summer, and our new squad looks set for a crack at a title push this year, although the media think we'll just finish in eighth but I'm really keen to see what we can do with this exciting young squad. Let's go. We started the season with our first ever appearance in the German Super Cup to kickstart the campaign, and Luka Sucic took just four minutes to open the scoring on his debut. Bayern defender Deo Upamecano put into his own net in the second half, meaning we added a first ever Super Cup to the trophy cabinet. And we were back this season for another round of Champions League football, and we were drawn in a tough group alongside Monaco, Fenerbahce, Inter, Chelsea, PAOK, Ajax, Real Madrid and Porto. And in our first game in Monaco, Denis Zakaria opened the scoring for the hosts before Alisi Ben Seguir added a fine second to put Monaco 2-0 up at half time. Then this team found a new gear entirely. Yusofa Makoko pulled one back on the hour mark before our talismanic captain Tales Magno scored a quick fire brace to turn the game completely on its head. But Tewo Awoni came onto the pitch with a point to prove and he scored a sensational hat-trick in just four minutes, making it the fastest hat-trick in Champions League history. That kick started a great campaign for us that saw us lose just two games across the league phase, meaning we finished an incredible 12th, but still meant we headed into the playoffs where we went 1-0 down to Liverpool at Anfield. 
and then we took them back to Germany. Our young midfielder Merck Homer got things started quickly with a ninth minute goal, but Liverpool hit back 10 minutes later through Curtis Jones to go 2-1 up in the tie. In the 67th minute, Asano Drago slammed home a penalty before Yusuf Makoko nabbed a sensational third to send us through at Liverpool's expense. But like last season, that was as far as our European journey would take us as we went out 3-1 on aggregate to Italian giants Napoli. In the Bundesliga, we were once again consistently solid, spending the entirety of the season within the top four, and after a little wobble in March, where we only picked up one point, we finished the season on a seven game winning streak, which saw us finish second, eight points off the top, but we claimed Augsburg's highest ever finish in their history. And it also meant we went into the final of the Pokal looking to retain our trophy in brilliant form. Our semi-final opponents were Bayern Munich, who we put to the sword at the WWK Arena, as goals from Talis Magno and Asano Drago put us 2-0 up within 30 minutes. Alfonso Davis got Bayern back into it with a scorcher before Drago restored our two-goal cushion just before half-time. Then our captain Magno added the cherry on the cake in the second half to send us through to our second consecutive final. This time round we had Bayer Leverkusen and Yusofa Makoko opened the scoring midway through the first half before Magno added a second just after the restart. Magno netted his second to wrap things up before left back Sanasi Bar slammed home a fourth to win us our second consecutive DFB Pokal trophy. This team are fast becoming my favourite rebuild I have done so far and that's two trophies this season and a second place finish. But then this summer, things took a turn for the worse. We had just shy of 60 million to spend on new players and rather wonderfully, the work has now begun on a new 41,000 seater stadium as we are really growing this club. This was a much calmer transfer window, although we did generate another 62 million through player sales, which included David Kalina moving to Dinamo Zagreb for 1.3 million, Frederick Jensen heading off to my old stomping ground Braga for 1.6 million, Hervoy Smolchik moving to Lille for 2.9 million, and midfielder Tim Brethrup joining Sao Pauli for 6.25 million. Goalkeeper Finn Darman also left the club, moving to Freiburg for 2.3 million and the promise of first team football. We only bought in one free transfer this summer with 19 year old defender Magnus Dalpiez joining us on a free from Bayern. We did pick up young striker Ilyas Anser from Paderborn with the express interest to loan him back for the season. And then Taiwo Iwoni broke his leg in pre-season, so Ansa will be getting some serious game time. This is the season where we will blood in some of those serious young talents, as Matteo Perez Vinlov, Tarek Buckman, Merk Homer and Noel Aseko Inkili have all now been brought into the first team picture to fill out the squad. In fact, we spent the entire rest of our budget on one player, activating the 61 million release clause of Frankfurt's Colombian defender Willian Paco who offers us a significant upgrade in the center of our defense. And then, like I said, things took a turn. We'd managed to renegotiate Talis Magno's contract to a 49.5 million release clause last season, but any attempts to renegotiate again were rejected. Then, Man City came in with the offer and of course, our captain and talisman headed to the Premier League. And I can't really blame him or Man City. I mean, he has been sensational for us since he came in and he's led this club to silverware and to the Champions League. So we wish him the best. To soften the blow of his departure, we picked up a player I've never heard of, Dilan Bakwa for 36 million from Strasbourg. This kid looks like a real find with crossing, technique, dribbling, first touch, flair and pace and acceleration all over 16. We then managed to snap up midfielder Pablo Torre from Barcelona for just 10 million, which is a stunning piece of business. Both of those players look absolutely fantastic and are well worth checking out in your next save. Our first 11 is fairly similar to last with Pacquiao and Dakwa slotting into their roles, but our bench is now stacked with young fresh talent and after three consecutive top four finishes, the media think we'll finish fifth. But 
they've been wrong on numerous occasions. As Pokal winners once again, we kicked off the season with the German Super Cup, facing champions RB Leipzig at the Red Bull Arena, and Kike Salas gave us the perfect start with a fourth minute header. Peke pulled Leipzig level in the 25th minute before Seiwald put them ahead. Debutant Dylan Bakwa made the perfect start to his Augsburg career with the equaliser before a wonderful long range effort from Anthony Ayono secured us our second successive Super Cup and land the first punch in our title challenge this year. But before we get to that title challenge, our Champions League campaign this year was a mixed bag, as we were drawn in a group with Partizan Belgrade, Monaco, Bayern, RB Salzburg, Nice, Aston Villa, Inter Milan and FC Porto. And we lost only one game throughout the entire league phase, and in the final game, we welcome Porto to the WWK Arena, and they scored the only goal of the first half through Rodrigo Zalazar. But Asan Odrago once again rose to the occasion as our star man once again lit up the European stage with a blistering second half hat trick to seal us a 4 1 win. However, we finished ninth, literally one place away from avoiding the playoffs, and unfortunately, we came up against Chelsea, who beat us in both legs to secure a comfortable playoff win and send us out earlier than our last two attempts. And doing slightly worse in a competition was something we did again. We navigated our way to the semi-finals of the Pokal, but we went out 1-0 to Hoffenheim thanks to a goal deep into extra time. But in the Bundesliga this season, we kicked off the season with a blistering 3-0 win over Wolfsburg, where Dylan Back was scored within the first 20 seconds of his league debut. All before Yusuf Makoko picked up a brace, which would become a regular occurrence this season. In the final game of the calendar year, we signed off for the winter break with a 3-0 victory over Bayern Munich. Odrago opened the scoring before Arne Engels doubled the lead shortly after the break. Pablo Torre wrapped up the convincing win just before the final whistle and it meant we were sitting top of the Bundesliga as we headed into the transfer window. But that win over Bayern came amidst an astonishing winning streak for this team and even the sale of defender Moritz Jens to Al Kadisa for 30 million couldn't upset the momentum. We won an incredible 18 straight league games between October to the end of March and it will come as no surprise to you to know that we ended up comfortably as champions, winning the Bundesliga by a whopping 14 points. That is right, we have taken Augsburg to the Bundesliga Championship. Um, I mean, it's an incredible achievement, but we have one more season left of this rebuild. So let's see if we can do it again and maybe go out with a brilliant European campaign. Budget wise, we have been given an OK £33 million budget, but this was a summer where we offloaded a number of players who are now on the edges of the squad. So we said goodbye to Torben Rain to Nuremberg for £1.1 million, Tarek Buckman to Hoffenheim for £4.4 million, and Ryan Shirky to Valencia for £4 million. Renier headed back to Brazil, signing for Fluminense for £4.3 million, whilst Ilias Ansa headed to Besiktas on loan with a view to a £1.7 million move. And then something happened that I was afraid of. After winning the Golden Boot last year, as well as being crowned the Bundesliga Player of the Year, Yusufa Makoko refused to sign a new contract due to the heavy interest in him. I wanted to eliminate the 43 million release clause, but alas. Real Madrid paid it in full, the board accepted, and our star striker headed to the Bernabeu. But as always, we plan for these sorts of things and I think I found a hell of a replacement. Nigerian striker George Ilenikena is not a player I've ever seen before in the game, but our scouts found this 20-year-old striker in the Belgian league at Antwerp and his stats are incredible. We activated his minimum release clause and he looks like he could be more than a capable replacement for Makoko. We did bring in some handy free transfers too, this time raiding the Premier League as Jarrell Kwanzaa joins us from Liverpool, as well as Marquinhos who joined on a free from Arsenal. We also brought in Luka Verbincic from Napoli for 14.5 million, which looks like great business, and on deadline day, the board agreed to splash the cash to bring World Cup winning goalkeeper Emi Martinez to the club, 
as he signed for Aston Villa for 17 million. I forgot to take a screenshot of the pre-season media predictions, but they had us down for third. But I think we could go for the title once again. It didn't take long for Ilan Kenner to show his potential as he netted twice in the first 20 minutes of the curtain raising Super Cup in a brilliant back and forth match with Borussia Dortmund which ended in a 4-4 draw. Sebastian Caceres missed the crucial spot kick for Dortmund and Luka Suchet slammed home the penalty to see us lift the Super Cup for the third time in this rebuild. It's like we enjoy doing what we did in previous seasons. In the Champions League this season, we were drawn against Dortmund, Spartak, Salzburg, Inter, PSV, Rapid Vienna, Liverpool and Real Madrid. And once again, we gave a good account of ourselves with the highlight coming when Liverpool came to Germany. A KG match was settled when Marquinhos raced clear to leather home the opener before Luka Verbencic wrapped things up with a gorgeous finish. We won four, drew two and lost two, which meant we once again went into the playoffs and once again, we narrowly exited the competition, going down 6-5 on aggregate to RB Salzburg. And then we repeated again, because we made it all the way through to the semi-final of the Pokal with a 5-1 win over Dortmund, a particular highlight. But once again, we went out in the semi-final, this time on penalties to SC Freiburg. And again, we had some big transfer business in January as goalkeeper Nicholas Hedl headed to Wolves for 22.4 million and striker Taiwo Iwoni left for Hoffenheim for 11 million. This, combined with the leftover Makoko cash, allowed us to bring in fullback Sasha Bowie from Porto for 31 million, winger Brian Zaragoza from Olympic Marseille for 11 million, and regen striker Patrick Dusench from Standard Liege for 18 million. We also had regen Joey Castro join us on a free to really help bolster the midfield. And after a close race in the first half of the season, we really hit our stride in the new year, hitting a 10 game winning streak between January and March that put us clear in the table. We had a wobble through April, only winning one in five, but we ended the season with a home game against title rivals RB Leipzig. Castello Lecaba gave them the lead after just 11 minutes, but Joey Castro fired in an equaliser before half time. Sasha Bowie then settled the game with this thunderbolt in the second half, and it meant we ended the season on a high as we had already been crowned champions for the second season in a row. This really has been a fantastically fun rebuild, so thank you for the recommendation. And before we wrap this up, I just wanted to highlight some of the incredible talents we discovered during this journey. Nicholas Heidel starts the game at just 22 years old at Rapid Vienna in Austria, but he became a real beast of a keeper for me, and we picked him up for just over 5 million. Anthony Ayono was incredibly consistent at right back and we picked him up on a free from Frosnoin. We picked Eric Martel up for 10 million from FC Köln and he became club captain and is now worth 63 million and has developed into the best defensive midfielder in the league. George Ilinikena would have been 16 when the game started at Antwerp and after one season where he scored 28 goals in 42 games for us, he looks like he'll become one of the best strikers in the world. But without a doubt, the best signing I've probably made in any rebuild is of Asano Drago, who we took on loan from Schalke's youth setup with a mandatory future fee of just 8.5 million. Across the five seasons, he never got a lower average rating than seven. He scored 20 goals across every season and just look at his stats. He's now worth 96 million and will likely go on to be one of the best players in the world. So there we have it. This has been a really, really fun rebuild and I really hope you've enjoyed it too. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're going to pick up any of those recommended players in your next save and let me know how you get on with them. Uh, feel free to recommend me another rebuild to do and whilst you're here please like the video subscribe to the channel join me on discord the link is in the description below and up here or up here is another rebuild video where I went to Germany with Borussia Dortmund um, I have been the bearded manager and I'll see you next time